Ready for some rapid fire questions about the Florida State Seminoles and college football? Here we go. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back in, everyone. I am Brian Smith, your host of Locked On Seminoles. Thank you for making this your first stop each day for a podcast. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. So today's show is going to be kind of an overview of some things that I've been thinking about with college football. If you have some of your own questions and some other ideas that you would like to put put up the email here in just a sec. I'm more than happy to talk about it, but every Saturday I'm going to do something like this. Sometimes there'll be some recruiting themes. Depends on what's going on. Obviously, it's the big weekend that starts off college football. It is week one, so we're going to just get right into college football today. But if you have any questions or anything you would like to throw out there, I'm working on one that somebody sent me about all the stuff that Bud Elliott did with the uh, recruiting metrics and how many good players you need at their four and five starter. I'm working on an article that I'm kind of going to overview, if you will, and put it into words for a podcast. But if you want to get out to me, Canes and Knowles rivalry at gmail.com. I'm planning on writing a book about Miami versus Florida State. It's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this podcast, by the way. But Canes and Knowles rivalry at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to listen to what you have to say. If you have a comment, maybe I'll read it on the show, or if you just have a question. Another opportunity. Every Saturday, I'm going to do something like this. There's no specific time length to this. I'm going to guess normally 10 to 15 minutes. But anyway, here we go. First one. I saw something today. Pro Football Focus put out top receiver groups for the country. Uh, The top receiver corps in the country by most people's metric, and it was by PFF as well as Ohio State. Kind of hard when you got Marvin Harrison Jr. to go against that. He is a very very, very talented player. But if you were doing it yourself and looking at it holistically, and they had a good point that they made, well, what about tight ends and how you use them? Like Brock Bowers, he had over 300 yards after contact more than the second guy over the last two years. That was Michael Mayer of Notre Dame, and he was a second round pick of the Raiders. I'm pretty interested to see how people would say this unit or that unit would be up there with Ohio State based on using wide receivers and tight ends. That's an interesting question. Some of the players at Florida State don't get enough hype. Jaheim Bell just came over from South Carolina. We don't know exactly how they're going to use them. We just know that they have a lot of talent. Florida State's top five, in my opinion. The starters, you could make an argument, and it just receivers now. That Florida State has the best. The depth has to prove itself this year, but they got a lot of guys that can run. I think they're one of the best in the country. Exactly where I would rank them. I don't know. I'm a guy that likes to see it first of a glass half empty guy for everybody, not just Florida State. You got to prove it to me. Last year was last year. This year is this year. So we'll find out real quick. Florida State's going against LSU. So if they do well, that's a big deal. And by the way, Johnny Wilson made the proclamation that, hey, week one, we should be the best right out the gate. And, you know, making that statement because you're going against LSU. I, I like the confidence, but let's see how they do. Question two. This is one that is very interesting to a lot of Knowles fans because he's one of the greatest players in college football and pro football history. In case you missed it on Twitter, there was a reporter that asked Deion Sanders, now the head coach at Colorado, something about his affiliation, where he graduated from, et cetera. And he said he graduated from an HBCU, did mention Florida State. Danny Cannell took exception to that. I'll let you guys go read it. I'm not going to read off the quote. But anyway, to make a long story short, Deion didn't exactly – when he replied to Danny, didn't exactly mince words, and he didn't use very good English, to put it mildly, and I think it's all just part of a play. There is nobody that I've met in my life that understands salesmanship better than Dion. I've only met him in passing. I really don't know the guy at all, but you can tell what he's after, and that's to win. He cannot stand to lose. He's all about recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. The way he replies, the way he does things on Twitter, it's just like he's – fitting in with a 17- to 20-year-old crowd, transfer portal and recruits. 
So I don't put a lot of stock in it, but if you do run across it, take a look at it and see what you think. I kind of think personally that it's just much to do about nothing. I'm, I'm not really all that enthralled with it, but anyway, sometimes players have spats. I really doubt that's going to mean much. More importantly for Dion, he needs to figure out have a, having a season that's not a complete disaster. Colorado has over 50 transfers, and I'm going to guess the chemistry is not going to be that great this year. He brought his son over. It's a really good quarterback, et cetera, but – they're going to struggle against a really difficult schedule. Number three, this is an interesting one. Somebody I was talking to was like, who do you want to see week one that you're curious about how they act, what they do? Well, Ohio State for me is, is the one out of the teams like Florida State, LSU is the best game. That's not really remotely in debate. It's a horrible week one in terms of the overall slate in college football, a lot of patsies. Ohio State plays Indiana. Indiana's just an okay team. They can they can play good at times. They don't have enough defensive depth. Certainly don't have enough DBs to handle Ohio State. Not that any team really does, but I think Marvin Harrison and those guys will go off. But the bigger question I think my buddy was talking about is Kyle McCord. He played with Harrison, ironically, in Philadelphia. I think it was St. Joe's Prep. But we don't know what he's going to do. And until they play at Notre Dame, I think that's week five, Ohio State's schedule is very mild. Their defense is just okay, in my opinion, as far as an elite level team. They got a lot to prove. I'm not sure they're an elite team, but they do have elite talent. Team and talent are not the same. They just start with the letter T. Ohio State has to prove a lot between now and the time they end. But let's make sure that uh, we talk about a few things first, and that's playing sound run defense, not having a bust like they did against Michigan and all that. It's, it's just one of those deals. So make sure that you do that. And if I add one more point, I'm kind of curious. If McCord does have any struggles early on, what does Ryan Day do? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, next up, and this is the one most people are probably interested in. What would I be concerned about for Florida State the most if something, you know, fill in the blank, if this happened against LSU? And it's real simple for me. LSU able to run the ball with generic, basic, here we come downhill running plays. If they can just run GT, meaning guard tackle, pulling around, if they can just run inside zone, it's going to be a long night for Florida State. If, it, if you flip it around, it's the same thing. The team that runs the ball between the tackles in just about any game, they gain an advantage. Both teams have experienced their lines. Both teams have a lot of on a running back. They're going to try to attack the other team coming right at them. Let's see what they can do. I really don't know. Um, I, I'm just going to guess that they're going to do a pretty good job. But, again, it's game one. You just don't know with chemistry for LSU or Florida State's front. Both have a ton of talent. you got to play together. I was talking to somebody about this, and people get bored hearing it. Run fit, run fit, run fit. Do your job. Don't make an error. The plays that go for 50-plus yards in college football, not, not that the offensive player doesn't do something good. It's usually because of an error. It's just true. That's why the NFL players, you don't see 50, 60, 70-yard runs very often. Not only are they big, fast, strong, and smart, they just do their job. You'll get three, four-yard run. If the O-line does well, it's hard. In college, there are just more errors, and that's why guys take – off and you see them hit the Jets and it, it's pretty rough at that point because you're just not going to make enough plays catching some of these running backs from behind. That is that is a tough road to hold. Before I forget, make sure you check out Game Time. We've got uh, a really good deal going with them. It's a great app. I screw up all the time, forget to get tickets, do something last minute. Game Time will let you download that app, check it out. they got last minute deals. Sometimes tickets are like four bucks or one of my buddies was on the app. They had four dollar tickets at a game he was looking at. You can go last minute to concerts. You can check out something like a play. You can go to musicals. It's not just sports. But if you want baseball, basketball, football, by all means. So make sure you check out Game Time. They've got a lot of different opportunities for a lot of different people. Uh, game Time is, again, the place for last minute tickets. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets, football, basketball, baseball, comedy, theater, whatever it is you're looking for. And the key here, it's easy to use. Download Game Time today, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Um, the other thing that was really interesting to me about the week one slate is a game that I think is at least somewhat underrated. You can't completely discount it. I'm not, not picking an upset here, but let's talk a little bit about Clemson and Duke. Had some questions about it myself. This is just something I'm interjecting. Cade Klubnick, sophomore quarterback. He was a five-star. Out of Texas, he's been tested. Won back-to-back state titles at Westlake and Austin. Great program. Can he, as a sophomore, which is rare, take that step to be not just a good quarterback, but somebody against Florida State, Miami, NC State, North Carolina, if there's a shoot, like he has to score on this drive. Can you count on him? That's one thing we're going to learn pretty quick because Florida State goes to Death Valley on the 23rd. But more importantly than that, for this game, they play at Duke. I mean, it's not like it's a raucous crowd, but they've got Riley Leonard. He's a future NFL quarterback. Do you like that, disagree with it, whatever? He's going to get paid. If they screw around and have problems, DJ Uyungle, he's out in Corvallis. He's a starting quarterback for the Beavers and Oregon State. What would they do? What if he got injured? Are they ready at quarterback if there's anything that he just needs to recharge? He needs a, needs a possession to, to watch. Him. I have no idea. The other thing, and this is maybe more important, this is probably their biggest issue. I don't think Clemson has recruited at an elite level. At O-line, not D-line. D-line, they're good. O-line. When they play Florida State or somebody that has a lot of NFL po- possibilities up front, the first and second team, can they just go boom? I ain't worried about Will Shipley. He's a dude. He's another guy that's going to get paid. But you got to open up holes for the guy consistently when you're playing top competition. That's not easy. The other thing with Shipley, he's good in the screen game, etc. And if you can get into second and third and manageable, he can take a three-yard swing pass and make it a 17-yard game by making two guys miss. He is tremendous. Little things like that to get their playmakers the ball. It all starts with running the ball downhill. That's been a part of Florida State and every other team that does well in college football for a long time. And Clemson, like, they run a lot of stuff that's A-gap. They're not trying to hit it anywhere. I mean, they're coming at you. they got to block Florida State's big guys up front. And Florida State is humongous in a few weeks. That'll be interesting. So if they don't do well against Duke this weekend, it won't be a good barometer for Clemson. Next up, a team right down the road, South Carolina. I was asked, who do you think is going to take a step back this year? I think it's South Carolina. As I like to put it, they were the hunter last season. This season, I'm not so sure about that. When another team kind of enters the mix in a conference, and the SEC is tough enough as it is, when a team steps up, especially when they got their quarterback returning and Spencer Rattler is back for the Gamecocks, teams are going to circle it a little bit if they beat them. Clemson in particular. When they went into Clemson's house last year and beat them, hey, man, you got to give them credit. But everybody knows they played pretty well last year, and now they got, you know, they're going to be able to talk a little bit, hey, we did pretty good. But a couple of things. Number one, they lost a lot of really good players. Running back went to SC, uh, defensive lineman transferred out to Oregon. Do they have enough kids that are bought into the program? I'm not sure they did. That sounds more like mercenaries to me than it does football players that want to make it happen. Because like East Coast kids going West, it's kind of weird to me, but whatever. The point is this. If South Carolina is going to win, it's going to be with a lot of new guys. They recruited pretty well. They got some new guys. They got Rattler back. But again, I'm not so sure that South Carolina is going to be that great. I think they're going to be closer to 500. And it's because... They're not the hunter anymore. They're the hunted. And I think they're going to be a little bit less talented at a couple of key spots and overall depth. Like Bell came down to Florida State, too. We'll see on South Carolina, but I'm not a believer right now. Final question. Who is this Drew Aller kid and why is everybody talking about it? I'm just going to give you my backdrop on my experience with him from being on the recruiting trail. I'm originally from Indiana. I went to see my parents a couple of years ago, and he was at the Elite 11 Regional there in Indianapolis, so I went. And he has a gun for an arm, cannon, absolute NFL arm when he was a junior in high school. No question about it. Listed at 6'5", 243 now. I don't know how accurate that is, but even if he's 6'3", if he's that big, that's a big human being. Smart kid, articulate, he can move. But if Penn State's going to take that next step and just go all out, 
I don't know if they can beat Ohio State or Michigan, but if they're going to, he's going to have to make some special plays. He's one of the guys that will make all these sidearm throws and all that stuff. But kind of like Cade Klubnik, this is his first time being the guy, like from the outset of the season. We'll have to see if Drew Auer can do it. I'm not convinced that he can, but again, he's a sophomore. Should he be able to? That's debatable, but a lot of guys really can't do that right off the bat. It's it's not really shocking. So keep that in mind. Um, make sure that you check out all the little things that are going on this weekend from games so you can ask some questions again. If you want to talk a little bit of college football next weekend, I'm going to do this every week. We're just going to make it rapid fire Saturday, um, prediction Friday. Those are the two I know I'm going to do. I'm going to do some other things during the week after four to State's game. I'm still deciding on some themes for specific days. But again, rapid fire Saturday is going to be each and every Saturday. So the other thing, um, if you have, once again, if you've got a question, there's the email. Or if you just have something you want me to talk about, Canes and Knowles Rivalry dot, at gmail.com. That's Canes and Knowles Rivalry at gmail.com. All right, everybody have a great day. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Florida State going to be playing against LSU Sunday night, biggest game of the weekend. When we get to it, I'll have a lot to say on Monday's show when we get there. But uh, it won't be necessarily 6 a.m. <laughs> because of the time of the game. I normally put shows up at 6 a.m. I'm probably going to be a little later, get up early and do something. I'm hoping to have something up by 9 a.m. on Monday, just, just as a little reference. So everybody have a great day. Thank you very much.